You know, if you're not binding every single neck you build, you're doing it wrong. Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. Today I want to talk to you about neck binding. What it is, why you want to do it, and how we do it. Um, but before we get too deep into the process, I want to uh, address a couple of things. Uh, uh, I know that I'm in the wood shop and it's boomy here and it's echoey in here. Uh, for everybody who said, hey, you need to try a lavalier microphone, I did. And uh, the, the interface with our camera didn't sync up, something went wrong, and uh, so you're just going to have to deal with it. Or uh, I can have videos where I don't talk, and I know a lot of people would like that too. But the, the microphone thing, it's a no-go, so sorry. And I'm not going to you know, insulate the wood shop because that's a place for dust to go. Remember, this is a working wood shop. So uh, it's going to be noisy, it's going to be dusty, but it's also going to be a lot of fun. All right, let's jump right in. Enough with the bullshit talk. What is binding and uh, why do you want it on every neck that you build? Well, I think everybody watching this probably has a good idea what binding is. It's the little accent piece here. Generally on acoustic guitars, it goes around the body too. And the re if you've ever built an acoustic guitar, you'll know that the reason that you bind it isn't uh, so that it looks cool with binding, but it's to cover up the, um, the joint where the top joins the side and there's purfling and, um, no, there's kerfing. And uh, so you, you, what you do is you take a little, a little rabbiting tool and you bind that area and it works really, really well. Plus, it looks super, super cool. Now, body binding is one of those things that uh, I used to hate doing it. And for everybody who's out there thinking, I don't want to bind anything, I hate doing that. It's just because you haven't done it enough. Um, people who buy guitars really dig binding. And it doesn't matter if it's wood or plastic, we're going to talk about both, but people who buy guitars really, really like binding. So put it on at least the necks. Um, it's easy to do on your neck, by the way. Um, in fact, it's so easy that every, every guitar you build should be bound. So, um, so it looks cool. You can also see that um, you, can, you can see the, the side markers more easily if you have binding. If your eyes are 50 years old like mine and you put white dots into brown wood, sometimes it's hard to see, they kind of disappear. But if you have, um, if you have uh, like this, this, this guitar is bound with maple and has the side dots and they're super, super easy to see. Uh, you can also add some kind of cool embellishments there. Uh, on this one, I didn't bind, I didn't take the binding channel all the way down to the end of the fretboard, so it looks pretty cool. So it's a feature that people go, ooh, ah, that's so cool, but it's actually just as easy to do that as not do it. So um, today we're going to bind this neck for a Challenger guitar. Um, we're going to, uh, we're going to be using tools in the sequence that works here in my shop. Now, if you don't have all the same tools that I do, you're gonna to need to alter your sequence, but um, you guys are smart, you know how to do that. And um, we're gonna talk about some of the tools that we use and some of the things that we do and why we do it. But, um, oh, one other thing. I have often not put binding on the end of my necks. So the reason that I generally do that is because um, there is a pickup ring, which normally goes right here. Now, in the case of this guitar, this has a single coil, so it will not be getting a pickup ring. But normally there's a pickup ring that butts up against the, the neck. So I kind of feel like, well, I don't put binding on the nut end. Obviously, you don't do that um, because that's going to throw off the, the way the guitar uh, intonates. You guys know that. But I don't put it on this end because there's a, there's a pickup there. So. Um, uh, and I just sort of stopped doing it on everything that, um, that is a set neck style. You guys can keep doing that, but people often ask me, why don't you continue the binding into the, into the, on the end of the, the, the fretboard? And I just got used to doing it um, without, and I like the way it looks, so that's the way I do it. It's like a thing that I do. So, um, all right, enough with the bullshit talk. Let's get to binding this neck here. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, radius this fretboard. Um, like I said, 
If you guys have, uh, uh, if you don't use the exact same tools that I do, the process will probably be slightly in a different order, but you're smart enough to figure it out, guys. Come on, you, you know you are. All right, let's jump right in. We're gonna go over to the radius sander and we're gonna get this guy radius. All right, let's do it. Okay, our board is all radius. Now what we have to do is make sure that the slots in the, uh, in the fretboard are deep enough. And um, if you use the same method that I do with these little indexing pins, uh, now's a great time to get rid of those in the fret slot. And because they're made out of wood, it's really, really easy to, uh, to just cut them out, cut the fret slot through the, uh, through the toothpick. I'm sorry, the tone wood, artisan made tone wood indexing pin. Okay. So now we are ready to put the rabbit in the, uh, in the hat. No, we're ready to put the rabbit on the edge here for the binding to sit in. Okay, now the reason that I like to do the radius first before I route for the channel, the rabbit, if you will, for the binding to go in, um, is because I like to uh, not use my sander to, um, to grind the, 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 the binding back. And because this is gonna be plastic, I like, to use, um, I like to do the radius first. If we use wood binding, then I do the binding first and then I would, I would uh, radius the whole thing all at once. But um, we are gonna go back and we're gonna put a, a finer sanding belt on the radius sander and clean it up after it is bound. But the first thing we need to do is cut for the rabbit. Now this is a, um, this is a Stumac binding cutter. It's basically just a rabbiting router bit with a bearing that matches the um, neck binding that I'm going to use. You don't have to buy this from Stumac. I bought this one from Stumac because it was easy. Link in the description below. Um, I've got this chucked up in my pin router and I'm going to buzz the, um, uh, uh, the, the rabbit channel for the binding that away. Now, if you don't have a pin router, you can always do this on a table router before you radius it. Um, but I like to see the cutter and uh, you can't really do that very well with, um, with a table router. So anyway, we're gonna, use, we're gonna use the pin router. Plus I have a pin router. Okay, you guys see, I, I don't know if you can see it, but I left a little bit of my fretboard exposed, so when I put the binding on there, you're gonna be able to see that little bit, which I think looks really cool, and uh, other people have said that they think it looks cool too. So it would have been just as easy to keep going further down with my, um, with my router bit and take all of that away and bind all the way to the end of the, end of the fretboard, into the maple, no big deal, but this is the way I like to do it. So the next thing that we have to do is we have to get our binding cut. We don't need to have all this other dangly bits hanging off and we know we need to have two pieces. So we are going to attach the binding with an adhesive and uh, let it set up. So I know in the past we've done some things where um, we put this on and then wicked acetone in there. That actually would work really great for this, but I have found that this, the, uh, this binding cement works actually better because it starts to set up almost immediately. And uh, the way that I do binding is I just put a little bit of it on there. Stick it down. 
and tape it in like three spots. Now I know what you're thinking. That's not nearly enough tape. And you're right, but I'm not done with my attaching yet. Okay. So this, uh, this stuff kind of comes out in turbo dump mode. So you just want to, you want to do it fast. I don't know if you guys can see that. It doesn't take much. Okay. Stick that dude on there. One of the things that you kind of got to watch out for is if your binding is taller than the rabbit it sits in, um, there's going to be a tendency for the binding to kind of fold over. So really make sure you got it pressed down good on the sides and pressed all the way down into the channel. These are some pieces of MDF that I use for specifically for binding. I just kind of put them on here. I put some, some masking tape so if there's any adhesive, it doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't stick to the MDF and then glue my, glue my guitar together. And then I take some squeezy clamps. And I clamp it in place. And now I go eat a cheeseburger. So we can pull off the excess tape here and we can grind off this binding. Now, like I said, I don't like to run this through my, um, my radius sander because the, the sander goes the full length of this and it kind of eats up the belt. So I have discovered that the hot ticket is a set of these nippers. So really all I want to do here is just get in close and cut off the excess and we can file the rest later or we can file it now. So just kind of go to the edge of your um, edge of your fretboard there and file it until it looks lovely. Okay. Now what I like to do is take these nippers and just go along the top and get rid of a bunch of it. It's fast and easy. Okay guys, it's as simple as that. And now this neck kind of has a little, we got classed up a little bit here. That's kind of the thing that binding does is, is it classes up the joint. Um, so this neck I think looks really, really nice with binding. I think that the uh, feature that I chose to put on this one where I have a little bit of exposed fretboard underneath the binding looks neat. And um, like I said, you're gonna be able to see the side dots uh, quite a bit easier because they're going to be black on a solid field of, in this case, cream. Um, but there's lots of reasons why you would want to, um, to put binding on every single neck that you make. The most important one, of course, is that it virtually eliminates fret sprout. So that's those little pokey outies that sometimes happen on the fretboard. If you have a piece of wood or plastic and the fret is undercut to fit in the fret slot and go over the binding, or if you do that Gibson thing where the binding actually goes over the frets, you will absolutely positively not get frets poking out through the slot that make you have an owie on your hand when you're, when you're rocking out. So guitar buyers really appreciate the look of this. 
um, uh, guitar players really appreciate the, uh, the no fret sprout. And people who check out your guitars are gonna go, ooh, wow, you thought enough to bind the neck. Um, I have this thing, like I think that necks, unbound necks on bound bodies is, but uh, bound necks on unbound bodies are, is totally good by me. Um, and of course, if you wanna bind everything, then, then the world is your oyster. There's lots of opportunities to bind stuff. Next, bind very, very quickly, even if you, especially if you don't do this little end piece like I, like I don't, but if you choose to put that on there, it's easy and fast. Um, if you're doing a fender style neck, you will have to bend the binding around, um, around the heel area, usually, um, but you know what? That's kind of par for the course, binding. So for everybody who says, I don't like binding, I don't like doing binding, I submit to you, it's because you don't do it enough. So, um, guys, if you have any questions about what we did in this video, please leave them in the comment section below. Um, uh, if you appreciate content like this, you might wanna go over to our Patreon page and consider becoming a member. Even a buck a month goes a long way to helping us bring you guys neat stuff like this. If you can't do Patreon though, we totally understand. Just like the video, subscribe to the channel, share the video every single possible place you can think of and help us grow the channel that way. That would be super, super awesome. So until next time, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, start your own YouTube channel. That's what I did. And for all those guys who've been trolling me in the last couple of days, start your own channel or make more videos for your channel, whatever you want to do. Okay, guys, take it easy. We'll see you next time. Yeah!